Welcome to this Lexio Divina experience of reading, meditating, and praying the Word of God for the second Sunday of Advent, Year C. For the next two Sundays, John the Baptist is presented to us as a model of Advent waiting. Of course, God is already with us, but his work of transforming human hearts and making this a better world is not yet complete. As we wait with John, we work to prepare the way for God and God's kingdom to come more fully into our lives and into our world. Through the gift of the word and the power of the spirit working in us, our eyes are open to a new seeing of where God already is in human life. And at the same time, where he is still to come. Feel free to pause the podcast at any stage of the journey and take it up again in your own time. We will take a few moments now to quieten our minds and hearts as we prepare to listen deeply to the gift of God's living word in today's gospel. Our food for the journey this week is Luke chapter 21 verses 25 to 28 and 34 to 36. In the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar's reign, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod, tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, tetrarch of the lands of Ituria and Trachonitis, Lysanias, tetrarch of Abilene, during the pontificate of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went through the whole Jordan district, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the sayings of the prophet Isaiah, A voice cries in the wilderness, Prepare a way for the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley will be filled in, every mountain and hill be laid low. Winding ways will be straightened and rough roads made smooth. And all humankind shall see the salvation of God. The reference to wilderness had a huge significance for the Jewish people. It was in the wilderness that God had formed and shaped his chosen people in preparation for entry into the promised land. John is convinced that the wilderness will once more become a place for a new beginning, for new growth and development of the people of God. For John the Baptist, God is already on the way And with a change of heart in his people, God will soon make his presence felt. Isaiah's dream of human solidarity, fraternity, justice and integrity will soon come to pass. One way of entering into this passage in meditation 
is to let it remind you of the reality of wilderness in our world today, both far and near. The global crisis of the pandemic, global warming, environmental disasters, deprivation and poverty of so many, the suffering of migrants, racial tensions, religious intolerance, violence and war, exploitation and abuse of the most vulnerable. And yet, in the midst of so much pain and suffering in our world, courageous voices of hope crying in the wilderness, calling us to a change of heart, to change our ways, to a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, challenging us not to settle for the world as it is, but to believe in all that it yet could be. summoning us all to play our part, to prepare the way for a brighter and better future for all God's people. For a time when the mountains will be laid low, arrogance giving way to humility Greed giving way to generosity, estrangement giving way to closeness to each other. Where every valley is filled in, the lowly are lifted up the invisible of this world becoming visible. The silent cries are now heard. Where the rough roads are made smooth, hatred giving way to love, war to peace, sadness to joy, where winding ways will be straightened, lies, deceit and abuse, giving way to honesty, integrity, respect for one another and for the environment. humankind shall see the salvation of God, where every person will know the dignity, the joy and the freedom of being human. let this meditation, this conversation between the passage and life experience, let it continue in the background as we go on our way, as we go about our ordinary everyday life activities. And let us keep our eyes and ears open to what's going on around us, what's going on in the wider world. And we may well be surprised to find this gospel passage living again in many new circumstances of private, public and global life today.
when the time is right, we may be moved to prayer, to thank God for the gift of this passage and the grace-filled memories that it has evoked. In our own words and drawing on some words and phrases from the passage, we let God know about our own experiences of wilderness, the injustices, inequalities, the oppression that gives rise to so much misery and suffering in human life. We give thanks to God for the voices of hope who dare to dream of a better world and are not afraid to challenge us to repent for the forgiveness of sins, believing that we're capable of more, capable of better, and that all humankind may yet experience the salvation of God. We ask forgiveness too for the times we've let ourselves be seduced by the worldly voices of Tiberius Caesar, Herod, Philip, Lysanias, Annas and Caiaphas and their promises of power, prestige and possessions as the way to human happiness. We may also feel to pray a prayer of petition that God's dream for our world will one day come to pass. That every valley will be filled in, every mountain and hill laid low, winding ways straightened and rough roads made smooth. That with our efforts and cooperation, all humankind will come to see and to experience God's saving presence among us today. With a trusting heart, let the presence of God our Father now take over and draw us into a deeper prayer of silence and stillness. We enter into that deep moment in a loving relationship where there is no longer any need to say anything or do anything. We simply wait for the Father to draw us deeper and further into his loving presence, to an experience of oneness with God, with one another and with all of creation. event of any distractions, perhaps we might choose a word or phrase from the passage, for example that beautiful phrase, prepare the way, and repeat it in the quiet of our hearts to assist us on this journey into the Father's embrace. our hearts simply and receptively in the presence of God and we stay with this deep prayer for as long as it is given to us. recognition of God's presence in the John the Baptist voices of hope in our world today encourage all of us in our different circumstances to make what changes we can as we wait for God's dream for our world to come to pass. <laughs>